Well, afternoon, VHR. Um, it seems that on Thursday we made an adjustment. Uh, I spoke with a couple of different individuals uh, who are in heroic kills that have seven seven kills, and um, got their input on how they like to deal with phase three of imp. And um, after talking with them, and then coincidentally uh, a couple hours later, Tato came on. And he recently got the kill also and explained to me the strategy that they used. The two coincided. So in turn, I felt like there was a lot of validity um, present in what they were trying to convey when it came to the strategy that they used. Now, before we were using a box formation where we were coming across and moving the imp all over the place. The issue that we ended up having with that, though, was that there was a lot of downtime when it came to the amount of damage going out and a lot of uptime to the amount of heals going out. Now, I know that because of the direct X issues that I had on my WoW logs, we weren't able to actually assess what happened on Wednesday and be able to make a judge, uh, adjustments to it. But the um, element that we kept seeing, that I kept seeing, involving my two, for example, and the other bars that I'm looking at, um, where I was healing through, that, uh, through those attempts, ended up showing me consistently that I was getting really, really low right before we ended up hitting the 25% mark which we did achieve and and that's something that we need to take credit for that our original strategy pushed us into a position where we were able to get so far the issue that i felt we were going to experience was that i was seeing myself at like 40,000 total mana 45,000 total mana when we were transitioning to that 25 percent point um and within a few minutes or a few well you know a few seconds of us going through the attempt naturally my my total mana was putting me into a position where I was almost out and I was going down to basic heals and that's because of the way that phase four is designed is to sit there to increase overall damage between 12 and 15 percent to the to the raid um, as a total and then in turn the way the mechanics start to apply themselves it also creates um, more damage being suffered by everybody because we're all spread out so the damage increases plus the fact that we're not being able to stack put us into a position where it becomes very very difficult for us to be able to manage what we were trying to do so we made some adjustments on thursday and what we ended up doing there was trying to work out some kinks and i felt like we were really close but we just needed a little bit more time and a little bit more patience so i was talking to everybody over the last couple of days about how I was going to get a dry whiteboard and they came in the mail so I'm super excited to be able to actually use this here and kind of like our our battle strategy um, that I'm going to be doing right here so what you see um, this is phase three okay this is where we're working the percentages of where we have now the third mechanic being present uh, we took out the mages before we're going to move into position this is our healing and range right here purple is going to represent a transitional healer that's going to assist so that way we get a little bit more heal support so 10 seconds prior um, to him casting the MOC onto the primary tank, these are our two tanks, this is our melee, this is our range units. I moved the range up a little bit too because I would like to kind of get a straighter line as we go down so that way we keep the mines on that side of the, of the confrontation, um, especially when we transition from phase three into transition two. Um, it keeps everything over there and allows us all of this to, to be able to use for what we're trying to do. Um, once MOC is about to be cast around 10 seconds or so, because we know it's inbound through DBM, uh, one of the tanks we can designate or we could just do it on the fly, it doesn't matter, um, will taunt. So we'll just assume that yellow was uh, being attacked by the boss and blue now is in a position where he needs to put himself into the taunting role. So he taunts, then yellow is going to move here. So this is all within the 10 seconds being left. Moves to the top where the throne's at. Gets himself the, den the, the distance where he's at max range. I'm saying 10 seconds to begin with when we start on our first couple of attempts to allow them to be able to get settled, get up there, get ready to use their taunt, be ready to do that. Um, and then at that point, two seconds or so before MOC is supposed to be casted, the tank will then taunt, thus getting the boss's attention, I'm going to pretend to be imp for a second. Big angry boss coming this way, right? Which is what we saw. And then he's going to stop and he's going to cast MOC. So then he casts it and this tank now is rooted and is about to blow up. Now, when this tank transitions out, one healer, and I'll probably designate myself or I'll designate Skynhammer based on who's here. If we're both there, then we're going to alternate. Because we have Leia Hands plus we have a number of the hots being casted already on the tank. And he's super prepared, super stacked. 
I would also recommend with the tank doing the best they can to try to save a, a mitigator or two during this part, just so in case he does, like, it takes him a little bit more time, DBM might be off, he punches him in the face a couple of times. But me and him are both going to rotate up here, and that way we're putting heels into the target, cast the root, then immediately he turns around and he's going to come right back down to this tank who's in a position to engage him. Okay. Thus now we've got the MOC rooted explosion here. The healer will move back down into this section here. And everything continues the same. This is going to happen twice during that time period. Now the couple of reasons for that is one, um, it's going to put us into a position. With our strategy, the way that we were able to tighten up through everything, we're getting to that point. Because of the fact we weren't moving during this phase here, I was sitting around like 80-90% of my mana pool, if not more. And that's where the other healers too. And this is based off of the logs that we were able to get from Thursday. Um, the MOC is going to go off. Um, we have damage into the boss, damage into the ad. All of that is good. And we want to keep that going consistently. Um, this group here is going to continue to kind of move down with each one of the mines and we want to be much tighter on the mines we were kind of getting some spacing there so like for example boom is green right we want to make sure that we're, we're hugging we're hugging green we're literally like boop boops yeah everybody's everybody's together and we're trying to do what we can to be as close as possible and kind of keep them in a stagnant line through that section there now this process once he explodes tank comes back down and we're back to taunting and, and, you know, doing the normal rotation until the next MOC comes along. Next MOC comes along, we'll say that it's a reverse of rolls. This time, blue has them. Yellow taunts 10 seconds prior. Blue moves up to location two. Healer comes over to, if not two healers, comes into position here. AOE healing here. AOE healing here, naturally, multi-target. Boom, we got support. Then we have the taunt. Boss comes up. Maybe, maybe not. It depends how quickly it is. Cast, and then he's immediately going to come back to his number two threat. On top of that, tank can also taunt too if there's some sort of issue because he, after the cast, he decides to, um, you know, not go after the target like he's supposed to mechanically. Then once we get our transition point, boss is going to move over to third pillar, and he's going to start casting, and that's when we're going to start getting ads. So MOC, everything happened. We come back to where we're at. Melee is going to drop down. One tank's going to drop down range and healers are going to drop down and we're going to do a light stack okay so like one two yards apart everybody kind of takes that area there we need to be tighter here we're like all over the place and then also too like say healer green or range green gets aimed at by one of the mages a couple of times i saw this okay look at how far now in relation you've got damage being done to you damage going off from the exploding ads in your way over here you need to be a little sharper. It needs to be more of a route like that, like a U, for example, or up and over, or if you've got a defensive and it mitigates magic damage, that's a good opportunity to use it. Hellstone, things of that nature, but also try to stay within range and then return back to the group in this area here. Meanwhile, all damage is going into the Reaver. We're going to activate Hero at this point. Reaver's out. Reaver's at the stairs. We engage. We burn, 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 burn. Reaver drops. Okay, once the Reaver is out of the of the of the attack, then all DPS moves to here. Tank takes its roll back up here. Assist with adds at this juncture because there's no tankable at this point. Um, oh, on tanks too. Watch on the Reaver. Uh, facial frontal attack um, and also boost to a face, which is a threat. You know, uh, a threat issue at that point. So we got to make sure that we do that. If this doesn't work out here, then we'll just bring the Reaver up to here like we saw in the Fat Boss videos, and we'll, we'll bother with his business right in here, which is probably what we're going to end up doing, but we'll try one time if we get to this point see what happens, right? It's all about trial and error. Um, so all range, heals, heals are doing their thing, getting their spacing as they need to. You can use either side for your movement. I think we're just going to keep tanks on the ads, to be honest. Um, the damage that they do softens them up, and we can always do single target. Um, which also do like if a tank wants to call out, be like I need, uh, you know, we could get boom or some sort of multi-target attack going on that can go into the ads and burns them down slowly. We want <clears throat> we want a single target type burn. We don't want a bunch of them blowing up at the same time. And we need to remember that, <clears throat> especially during the second phase here, first phase. Sometimes we get some spikes because we all get over there and all of a sudden all of our damage comes along and then it's like boom and we get a blow up. And then that's just a whole ton of damage that's going on there. Uh, we burn the second mage, remember interrupts, second mage drops, everything rotates, third mage interrupts, and then clean up, okay? Boss comes down, we are now in phase four at this point, 
Um, <clears throat> ads are going to be a big deal. So whenever the ads are up, ads are priority. Um, boss is pretty much going to be in this position here. At this point, we're going to go back to a light stack. I'm going to turn both of these into healers for positioning awareness. We've got our two tanks. We have our two tanks dealing with target. We've got our melee doing their thing, working on the ads, working on the ads. We're going to do kind of like a spread. I'd like the healers to take the back row with um, one or two of the hunters present, if not both. So that way we kind of have this AOE healing in here. We have <clears throat> all damage going into here. And then as brandings come out, they can be brought to the hunters over and over. And then thus the hunters, what they can do is they can get the brandings around here. And then they can just take them back in here and take them back in here. Um, by then this area will be cleared up too. And what we can kind of do is just kind of move from one side of the stage that way until we get across it and just keep kind of stacking here. Now remember a big thing on this one for the tanks is that when MOC gets casted, whoever it gets casted on, you have mobility now. But at the same point, <clears throat> you need to immediately run up into the corners of one of the pillars to allow half the orbs that you're about to explode into the group to go that way. The rest of the orbs are going to come across this way, this way. I would recommend positioning wise you do that over there because then if you think about it in a spherical presence as it's coming out, you know you're going to have it kind of rain like that. <clears throat> what you're going to end up doing is because we're here, we're going to have a lot less coming this way with a bunch of them going that way and that way and that way across. So it's really going to kind of give us a really a much thinner approach to it. Keeping that triangle, you know, for here, here, you know, our synergy here. So this is where we're going to be doing all the healing. And then everything is just going to transition across as we burn through it. Um, the 25% phase is going to be pretty intense. Uh, when mines go down, you want to make sure that you're avoiding them too. Uh, if you do hit a mine, which was a huge problem on Wednesday, from Wednesday to Thursday. I mean, on Thursday, we were hitting way more mines than we were on Wednesday. And I think that's relevant to several factors. We had four new players, five new players present that haven't done the fight before, that weren't doing it the night before. Um, I'm going to chalk it up to fatigue, too. I'll be honest. A lot of the uh, players commented on that, that it seemed like a lot of people were really, really tired. So we made, you know, these are, the, um, you know, those are, these are some factors that, you know, that play into it. We still need range DPS. So, you know, if you know anybody that does range caster DPS, for example, please send them my way. Um, we're going to get, uh, we'll try... <clears throat> Uh, continuing with recruitment, see what we can and can't find, and then just kind of make adjustments from there. But this is pretty much the layout of the strategy. Um, I hope that it clears up a lot of the questions that people have. And, um, you know, if you have any posts, put it below the the video. I'm going to, and I'll answer them as properly as I can. I'll be in game pretty short, pretty shortly also uh, to work on my hunter and things of that nature. Okay, have a blessed day, VHR. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video.